Welcome to Daily Devotion with Ken Gurley. Devotions designed to inspire you on your daily walk with God. Here's your host, Ken Gurley. Hey, good Friday morning to each and all of you. Can't believe it. Maria, darling, we're here. Friday. Made it to Friday. Wow. This week has flown by. And uh, we've just seen some amazing, that's right, let's dance. Amen. Let's dance. Who just said that? Who said that? I saw that fly by. And um, what a great day. What a great day to be alive. I've just been singing today. No, I will spare you. I will spare you that, but I don't have a rope choir. I don't have a Hammond B3 organ and um, sophisticated sound system. And yeah. Can't lip sync it, but I've been singing this morning. You're going to know what I've been singing in just a moment because you're going to start singing it too. You're going to end up singing this song all cotton picking day long. You are. It's been on my mind all morning. Can't get away from it. What a great subject today. Happy that you're a part of this and uh, thankful, thankful for our daily devotion family. Those of you that are newbies right out of the factory, here we are. We meet Monday through Friday. 7 a.m. Central. Some of us jump over to kycc.com at 7.45. And um, we just have a good time together. Encourage one another and see some good things happen. Um, Two fascinating stories today. I love stories. Jesus loves stories. He told a lot of stories. We call them parables. And um, I, I just believe we find ourselves in stories. And Two great stories. Uh, The first is a historical story from the United States. And then the second goes to scripture. And you're going to know what song I've been singing in short order. You're going to know it. Let me give you the first story. It's a fascinating story. I won't go into the backstory of it. Annie Sullivan, uh, at the age of three, her vision began to fail. By the age of 14, she was placed in a school, the Perkins Institute for the Blind. She showed an aptitude to help other students and to teach, and so she herself became a teacher. It would be six years later, at the age of 20, she would graduate from college, and then she met her most famous student, of whom her life would be entwined the rest of her life. Of course, if you know the name Annie Sullivan, you surely know the name Helen Keller. Helen Keller was was born blind. She couldn't see, she couldn't hear, she couldn't speak uh, early in her life. So the woman who was nearly blind unlocked the world of a child who was blind. Quite literally, the blind leading the blind. In fact, they would be united in life and even in death, along with President Woodrow Wilson, his wife, Edith, Annie Sullivan, Helen Keller, would be buried in a shared chapel in the Washington Cathedral. It would be long after Annie's death, Helen Keller spoke at a ceremony at Radcliffe College, her alma mater. And that day, a fountain was dedicated to Annie Sullivan, Helen's teacher. And although Helen had learned to speak and could speak quite proficiently at the time. Although Helen Keller was a prolific author at this time. Although Helen Keller was a world traveler, been at home in the courts of kings and the halls of parliament. Although Helen was a highly intelligent woman who made speeches all over the world. That day at Radcliffe College, at the dedication of the fountain in honor of the woman who unlocked her world, Helen Keller gave the shortest speech of all time. One word. Just one word. Anybody want to guess what it was? One word. The same word that was signed into her hand over and over by her teacher. The word that had opened up her world. The word that had connected Helen to the land of the living and the land of the sight filled. That moment, standing before a fountain in Boston, Helen must have raced back in her mind to the day 
Well, she was very angry and she had run from the house frustrated and went to her favorite hideout by the well. And there her teacher, Annie, found her there. And she began to pump water from the well. And as it splashed over Helen's hands, Annie began to sign that single word over and over again. Until Helen realized that this cold liquid that I'm feeling in my hands has a name. It has a name. And suddenly she realized that what I'm feeling has a reality. There's a word attached to it. And as Annie signed it, and Helen mouthed it, a voice long dormant began to speak a single word, water, water. The now eloquent Helen Keller spoke at a dedication ceremony some 73 years later in 1960. The shortest public speech in recent history, a word, a single word, water. 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 Annie Sullivan once said, love is something like the clouds that were in the sky. You can't touch the clouds, you know, but you feel the rain and you know how glad the flowers and the thirsty earth are to have it after a hot day. You can't touch love either, but you feel the sweetness of it that it pours into everything. Life and love. It's in the pouring, folks. It's in the pouring. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, oh, here we go. That was the historical United States story. What about a biblical story? One, Matthew 26. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman, get ready, having an alabaster box a very precious ointment, poured it on his head as he sat at me. Life is in the pouring. Oh, yes, it is. Life's a vessel. Heaven called the Apostle Paul. You remember what God told Ananias? He's a chosen vessel. Paul called all of humanity in 2 Corinthians earthen vessels. Life is a vessel. Romans 9, hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Life is like a vessel. It can be good or bad, honorable, dishonorable. Life like a vessel can be made over again. One of my favorite passages in the Old Testament is Jeremiah 18 when the prophet instructed by God went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. And that is the key, isn't it? It's still in the hand of the potter. And he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make it. A vessel like a life can be marred. It can be broken. That, that, pivotal passage that we don't really understand what it's saying, but when you see it, you can't unsee it. That Ecclesiastes 12 is talking about life. Remember him before the silver cord is severed or the golden bowl is breaking broken before the pitcher shattered at the spring or the wheel broken at the well and the dust returns to the ground. It came from the spirit returns to God who gave it. Life is a vessel. In your life, you, you remember that old, that old saying, nature abhors a vacuum. Your life is going to be filled with something. Oh, yes, it is. It, it, it's going to be filled. I, I, I have learned this about my day. Now, my day is it's pretty much filled before I ever do anything. There are big things in my day. This is one of them. It's just a, a big rock in my life that fills the vessel, one of the big rocks. You remember that old story, the big rocks, they have to go in first. This is one of the big rocks. My time alone with God, then my time preparing for this, my time with you. It's one of the big rocks. 
Your life's going to fill up with something. Your days are going to fill up with something. Your heart's going to fill up with something. God wants to fill your vessel. He wants to fill it. I love that. I, I, I love one of my favorite, Brother Marcelli, one of my favorite sermons to preach when I was a young preacher. Not that I'm, you know, I'm not young. Yeah, not that I'm not young. Ephesians 5, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. You're going to be filled. You're going to be filled. Do you know that Paul went from this amazing passage of being filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart for the Lord. He went from that right into the home life. Husbands loving your wives, wife loving your husbands. Why? Because what you're filled with will affect every relationship. If that vertical relationship, if you are being filled, if God is pouring into you, then you're going to pour out into every relationship. You bump a glass of water, water will spill out. Bump a life and whatever's on the inside is going to slosh out. Yes. If a person is filled with hurt, anger, revenge, just let a little trial come along. Let that final straw that breaks the camel's back come along. Everything on the inside, all that hurt, anger, revenge is going to come out. Well, but if a person is filled with the right things, it sloshes out too. Oh, that we could let God Fill our lives with goodness. Our lives were meant to be poured out. Wow. Okay, quiz time, quiz time, quiz time. How many of you have ever read a little book? It's a little book by Og Mandino. It's called The Greatest Salesman of the World. You say, Pastor, I'm not in, I'm not in, sales? I'm not. I, but trust me, if you've never read this book, you got to read it. The Greatest Salesman in the World. Oh, wow. What a book. LaWanda, you've read it? Good, good. Sue's read it. Yeah, we've got Peggy's read it. I, what a book. Charlotte's read it. Yeah. Wow. It, it, I, man, I, hey, Brother Klein's read it. Wow, this is good. Can I give you a quote from the greatest salesman in the world? By the way, who was the Apostle Paul? That's, that's what the story's about. Augmentino said, realize that true happiness lies within you. Waste no time and effort searching for peace, contentment, joy in the world outside. Remember, there's no happiness in having or in getting, but only in giving. So reach out, share, smile, hug. Happiness is a perfume. You cannot pour on others without getting a few drops on yourself. I love that. You see, it's the pouring of life. Life is not in the accumulating. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Life is in the pouring. It's in the pouring out of a life. You say, well, I've got to conserve this. I've got to hold on to this. Can I just tell you, I've learned something. We are to be emptied from vessel to vessel. We just pour. We pour indiscriminately. We just give of ourselves. And you know what happens? So long as we're giving, we're still receiving. It's in the pouring. That wise woman of Tekoa who came to David and said, O oh, king, life, life is like water poured on the ground. This is perhaps one of the oldest offerings known to man. It's called the drink offering, the libation. Jacob at Bethel poured oil out on those rocks, the place where God met him. Each and every day in the temple, the morning and evening sacrifice, they were accompanied with drink offerings. Each of the set feasts saw wine and oil poured out before God. Each Sabbath saw drink offerings. Accompanying the continual burnt offering was a drink offering. The life of the grape, the life of the olive, the precious blessings of God 
were poured before him, recognizing him as their source, that we pour our life out before God. And in pouring it out, it's returned in manifold ways. That your life should be poured. It should be poured. Don't hold, don't, don't conserve it. Don't be a Scrooge. Poor, poor. Oh, Beverly, you're all, o- you're all over this song. You know where I'm going. Life should be poured. Yes. Some people live for themselves, hoarding it all to themselves. Some people think only about themselves. They fast only for themselves. They pray only for themselves. Their prayer requests are all revolved around self. Lord, I came across this quote. You you don't know, you don't know how this quote changed the trajectory of my life. Because when God spoke to me back in 08, I realized that I had written this down and had read it several times, almost made it a prayer. Here it is. Lord, help me live from day to day in such a self-forgetful way that even when I kneel to pray, my prayer should be for others. Others, Lord. Yes, others. Let this my motto be. Help me to live for others that I may live like thee. If you know anything about our history, you know that word, others, was the word that brought us back from near death. A church destroyed, demoralized, discouraged others became the mantra of our church, the one word mission of our church. God, I want to live for others. I want to pour out my life. Jeremiah 48, Moab hath been at ease from his youth, settled on his lees, hath not been emptied from vessel to vessel, neither hath he gone into captivity, therefore his taste remained in him, his scent is not changed. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, I'm going to send him wanderers. They're going to empty his vessels. They're going to break their bottles. You see, your vessel will be empty. Your bottle will be broken. Your life will be poured out. But you have to determine whether you will do it or whether someone else will do it. A life is lost in keeping, but a life is won in giving. It's in the pouring. It is in the pouring. The Bible speaks of the widow of Zarephath who continued to pour out of her vessel and never ran dry, or of Hagar who gave her son everything in the pitcher to drink. And after she emptied the pitcher to keep her son alive, God opened her eyes and she saw the well of Beersheba springing up. Why cling to that little vessel when God can open up the fountains from the deep? It was on the eve of his death, Jesus picked up a cup and said, this is my blood poured out for you. Life is in the pouring. And when he died, blood and water flowed from his side. It was a drink offering before God. What caused him to do this? God so loved the world. Living is in the pouring. Loving is in the pouring. Life is a vessel. Life is a costly, precious alabaster vessel. Life is filled with equally precious things, but life is not really lived until it's poured And it's love that tips the pitcher. Alexander Pope once said, it's with those narrow-souled people, as with narrow-necked bottles, the less they have in them, the more the noise they make pouring it out. Not so with Mary. She broke the top of that alabaster bottle. In silence, she made her drink offering to God. Tessie and I have been running the Bernards around the last couple of days. And I was thinking this morning about a trip to D.C. that we made um, right before the pandemic. We were at the National Prayer Breakfast and we were sitting there at the table and 
C.C. Winans got up and sang a song that our own Janice Jo Strand wrote. The room grew still as she made her way to Jesus. She stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for her kind. Still on she came through the shame that flushed her face until at last she knelt before his feet. And though she spoke no words, everything she said was heard as she poured her love for the master from her box of alabaster. I've come to pour my praise on you. That's what I've been singing this morning. Because life is in the pouring. You weren't there the night he found me. You did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me and you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. Wow. Life is in the pouring. It's in you and me saying I will not retain, I will release. Well, that's so true in everything. I'm not going to retain the hurt. I'm going to release the hurt. Paul said this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind. Press, press. It's letting go. It's releasing. I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of. I've been forgiven. And that's why I love him so much. Life is in the pouring. Jesus said, if you've been forgiven much, you love much. And any time, as I said yesterday, you see people that have grown up in church and you see people not worshiping, they've forgotten what God's done for them. If grace is no longer amazing, your life has become a stagnant cesspool stagnant pool. You need to release it. Release it. Release it. Maybe you need to stand at the fount of Calvary and remember the love that was shed, poured out for you so that you will begin to imitate and follow after the one who showed us that life is not in the holding. Life is in the pouring. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord here today. What presence? Just thankful for what God is doing. Thankful for the season that we're moving into. We are going into two months of the life of Christ. Two months, we're going to focus on the life of Christ called chosen and faithful. If you've seen the crowdfunded chosen series about the ministry of Jesus Christ. We are using that as a, a launching point to talk about the greatest story ever told, the story of the love Jesus Christ has. The executive producers of The Chosen will be with us Sunday in Pearland and um, talking about what motivated them to do this. And by the way, I don't know if they're going to reveal, and I don't even know if it's common knowledge, but I know what's coming next. Oh, I know what's coming next. And I, oh, you're, oh my. Let me just say, Pentecostals, you're going to love what's coming next in that story, in that series. So if you would, if you would, just open up your heart and remember Jesus Christ, he poured out of himself. He made of himself no reputation. And that's how you and I are going to see our lives transformed. Life is in the port. What a privilege to be with you this week. Thank you. Like and follow. Facebook, share. YouTube, subscribe, share with others. Go check out KenGurley.com. And thank you for everything you've done for this family, every prayer that you've made, every word of encouragement. Thank you for that. I, You can sense it. This is something special. Something special is going on here. KYCC.com in just a few moments. Thank you for being a part of this. God bless you. Go have an amazing weakness. 
uh, amazing weekend. Weekend. I read something. I read something. There's a 99.9% chance that the church that had Easter service last Sunday will have church again this Sunday. 99 more than that. So go check it out. God bless you. May the Lord be with you. Look forward to seeing you on the other side. God bless. Thank you for sharing in daily devotion with Ken Gurley. We pray this ministry has been a source of encouragement and strength to you. Please be mindful that your financial support enables us to meet with you each day. To give a donation or connect with us, visit our website at kengurley.com. There you will also find the latest books, podcasts, and resources. Blessed 90 Days to Change Your World is Pastor Gurley's latest book. You can get your copy of this life-changing book at kengurley.com. May God's favor rest on you in every way until we meet again.